Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen. And I'm Doug Carmen. And welcome to the show. We're happy to have back Scott Alexander, president of the Bay Area Amphibian and Reptile Society. He is diligently working to breed critically endangered species. Hey, welcome to the show. Glad well, to thank have you. you back. Why is it important for us to protect the endangered species? You know, some of the people aren't familiar with a lot of these uh, lesser known species. So why is it important? Well, turtles and tortoises specifically are being eaten into extinction throughout Asia and Southeast Asia. So it's really important that uh, habitat uh, preservation and restoration is but if uh, a lot of times they're being exported to mainland China where they're being consumed for traditional Chinese medicine or for the food markets. And so that's why I'm really dedicating a lot of resources to try to produce them in captivity. Now it's been two and a half years since you uh, visited us with your animals, with the reptiles. Uh, kind of give us an update on your breeding. We were, we were quite interested in the last time you were here talking about your Right, process. there's uh, two species of uh, chelonians or turtles and tortoises that I'm working on. Uh, specifically, uh, we have the radiated tortoise here. And uh, this is a species found in Madagascar. It is considered critically endangered, um, both by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, as well as the Department of the Interior maintains the U.S. endangered species list. So I do have my captive bred wildlife permit I think mm. last time we talked, I don't think I had yet received my captive bred wildlife permit. And I also now have five of these. I think last time we talked, I had three. If and who issues serves. that for you? That's issued uh, by the Fish and Wildlife Department. Mm -hmm. And this allows me to engage in interstate commerce. I can buy and sell with other permit holders across state lines. Wow. Otherwise, I'd be in violation of the U.S. Endangered Species mm -hmm. Act, and you certainly don't want uh, right. to be on the wrong side of the fence. <laughs> right. <laughs> what about internationally, uh, buying species like this, uh, this turtle? Is it, it's not native to, uh, to the, uh, North America. No, it's not. And uh, international trade is regulated by CITES, C-I-T-E-S, the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species of Flora and Fauna. I think there's something like 160 signatory nations. And this one is listed on Appendix 1, which means you need permits both from the country of export and from the country of import. So basically, trade is restricted in this species. No, no, Unfortunately, you... they are being exported out of Madagascar into China, Thailand, and other parts. They're also being consumed in Madagascar. And so that's, uh, that's probably the biggest threat to this mm. specific species but right now. You're, you're breeding some of these now, currently, or is this y one? Or? Yes, I am. Well, uh, I'm trying to. I have uh, eggs incubating, knock on wood. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll have uh, four new hungry babies to feed. <laughs> and so, um, right, this one is na named Tatum. We also have Tina with us uh, today as well. And she is my one of my adult uh, breeders. Oh, so yeah. she's... Uh, <laughs> Whoa. She's a rather uh, How photo. much does she oh, weigh? A biggie. What does she weigh? She weighs about 20 pounds. <laughs> 20 and, uh, pounds. I wanted to uh, thank uh, Stephen Saventas oh, for Hi, Stephen. Hi. For bringing Steven. her to us. Wow. He's going to be helping shuffle animals back and forth. <laughs> so, right, this is, this is Tina. She's a full-grown animal. And this is kind of the wow. Cadillac of the tortoise world. These guys will sell for about five thousand dollars each. Oh, really? <laughs> so yeah, I paid uh, two thousand dollars for this one, which is stud book oh, registered. And so uh, one each a watermelon. <laughs> it doesn't take too many of these five thousand dollar tortoises before you start talking about real money. Wow, yeah, yes. you're broke. <laughs> yes. So yeah. what is the most valuable part on the tortoise? What? You know, I would say the whole thing when it's alive. If they're dead, they're not, <laughs> right, right, not right. nearly as valuable to me. Right. But of course, in the traditional Chinese medicine, uh, they right. will grind up various parts right. of them. There's yeah. one species that they think cures cancer, mm. and it is going for over $2,000 a kilogram over in Hong Kong. Now, do they grind up the shell? Is that what they, they think? That they do. They'll grind up the shell. They'll grind up all parts of the animal. But yeah, it's going. Don't they have some sort of 
scientific research that proves that or they don't go by that or again the traditional Chinese medicine a lot of it is these yeah. traditional cures and passed um, down to generation yeah. generation exactly. yeah. don't know. And in the past it, uh, they might consume tortoises since tortoises live a long time they think it makes you live a long time sure and so uh, I, I traditionally they might have eat tortoises at uh, weddings and special occasions but now with the growing affluence of China, they are consuming a lot more tortoises and their turtles and tortoises at, and they're harvesting at unre, unsustainable rates. Mm. And so that's why it's uh, ideally they're protected in the natural environment. But if they aren't, I think it's important that people like me contribute to captive breeding efforts so that we have some type of uh, fallback plan. Well, when, when you breed substantial numbers of these, would they would you sell them back or would you? Uh, well, that's a problem I have not yet experienced. If I oh, am yeah. so fortunate as to breed substantial numbers, I would uh, trade and trade them back. Uh, trade yeah. with other breeders, you know, to oh. maintain your. Uh, you want to maintain genetic diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this, you don't this, want too much inbreeding. Exactly, and this one is stud book register. There is a stud book, um, which maintains a list of the males and females, and it is one of the goals of this stud book is to make sure that you have a diverse uh, genetic within the genetic the captive population oh uh, yeah that's really finally he's getting interested in the water yeah. <laughs> yes we have this watermelon it does not seem to be a great hit let's see if tina's interested here <laughs> oh tina's oh, oh, oh there, there we go. go we have a taker <laughs> come on line up on it <laughs> there we go I have Tina. There oh, we go. that's a go. Oh, somebody likes <laughs> my watermelon. Oh, <laughs> wow. So, I, so these guys are also really personal tortoises. They're uh, really friendly. You can pet them uh, on the head. They're not like snapping tortoises or. or <laughs> no, the snapping turtles are <laughs> illegal in the state of California. The turtles, mm. yeah. I've had uh, snapping turtles in the past, and uh, the alligator Oops. snapper, they've recently discovered that. Yeah, what's up? There's three some. different species of the alligator snapper. Give me oh. some. Oh, uh, so they get along pretty well. I, oh, he likes that. I house these guys separately just because the little one is uh, so much smaller. Yes, yes. But <laughs> this is a female. These are both females, so I'm hoping down the road that uh, they're both wow. egg-laying, contributing members of the uh, colony. Well, how long would it take for the little one to be ready? These guys grow pretty slowly. They grow about an <laughs> inch a year. Uh, and so, right, this one's about three years old. Wow, three Close years. Uh, they, right. That is slow. That, I mean, to me, it seems slow. Right, but. they grow about an inch a year. And so t Tina's uh, uh, at least a teenager. I've had her about five years uh -huh. now. And she was a full-grown adult female when I got her. She's like, give me <laughs> some. <laughs> Gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Watch these guys some. fight over. Yeah, yeah, well, I think we're getting there now. It's like, uh, very nice. But they got beautiful your shells. place must be interesting with all of these running around. Right, I have a <laughs> number of habitats set up inside, and I also have outside enclosures as well. Uh, these guys are also microchipped. Um, it's important to have some type of security precautions in case uh, in case they disappear. So. Yeah. Uh, so we do have some traceability. Well, we rescued, uh, what was that, a water, what, we were driving somewhere. And oh, one it was, was some sort of water turtle. Water turtle, yeah. it was in the street. It was very and, strange. I and mean, it was obviously an escape from somebody. Yeah, we just knocked uh, on the nearest door and said, here, could you take care of this place? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. We were on our way somewhere, and uh, that's well, what we had to Tell us something about uh, your, your club speakers and that, but so our audience knows maybe they'd like to hear more about what's going on with, right. your, with your organization, but and and some of the educational programs that you guys put on. Right, we have uh, meetings on the fourth Friday of every month at the Coverly Community Center in Palo Alto, and so we will have. Uh, oh, we've had uh, Dr. Bob Norris speak before. He's the head of Stanford's emergency room, so he's an expert on uh, snake venom and the treatment of snake bites. Oh, cool. We've uh, we have. Uh, uh, Wolfgang is going to be speaking on reticulated pythons. He has a number of uh, locality-specific reticulated pythons. So it runs a gamut from academic types to uh, advanced hobbyists, breeders, um, 
We've also had uh, Owen from the East Bay Vivarium speak to us. So uh, we also participated in a number of educational programs. Uh, Sulphur Creek, we have uh, Sulphur Creek coming up on July 27th. We're also going to be at the Santa Clara County Fair on yes, I saw that. July 31st through so Now that August would be a 31st. good place for people to go see maybe a collection. Will there be a collection of uh, reptiles Absolutely. and snakes? There will be uh, club members and we'll have our, uh, our own animals there. So these won't, it won't be a commercial show, but definitely an educational show where yes. we'll be education, educating the public about uh, the need for habitat conservation. And there are some animals like red-eared sliders that are being overpopulated. Uh, there's a big problem with people releasing their animals into the waterways, releasing mm. these animals into local ponds and streams, and they're displacing the, uh, the native western pond turtle. Mm. So the, mm. the cute little animal, turtle that you see at the flea market, you know, typically has red yes. or orange stripes. Yes. Yes. They've been around in the pet market forever. They have. But they have. it's an extremely invasive species over in Singapore. And I went over to Singapore and I saw red eared sliders, which are native to the United States. I saw them in Singapore. In Singapore. Yeah. And uh, it, it really is a problem. We're trying to place red eared sliders. So if anyone's interested in adopting a red eared slider. So you have an adoption program. We do. We have an adoptions coordinator. It's listed on our website. Great. And, Great. Um, <laughs> I think he wants to go. Yeah. Maybe have somebody else we can. Yeah, I, I think I think that's yeah, probably the cue. Let me just uh, yeah, oh, well, bring, bring up some more. Yeah, he will go. Watch out, he's coming off. <laughs> oh, help! Yep. Help! That would be bad. Yeah, that, now this is a different variety. Uh -huh. What happens when so we run here, out of? Oh, look at this! Now see the difference. Right here, you can see the difference in the. Uh, this is the carapace. The pattern, yes. And the plastron. The yeah, carapace the is the back part of the shell. Oh. And here you can see, let's leave them oh. up just for a minute, Stephen. Thank you. Uh oh, uh, oh have, boy. We have a turtle race. <laughs> so you can see the radiated tortoise has a higher dome shell, yes. whereas these others are Burmese star tortoise. This is another critically endangered species. These guys mm -hmm. are found in the dry, deciduous forest <laughs> of Myanmar. And these apparently are closer to racing tortoises. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> All right, Stephen, uh, <laughs> you can take the radiated back. <laughs> so these guys, oh, we, can, we can leave them here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> they might have something else in mind. <laughs> so I did get, uh, since I've talked to you guys last, I've procured three additional Burmese stars. Wow. You can see these are mm -hmm. marked on the back. I noticed that, yeah. With the so. number, I got, I did a trade with a, <laughs> Baylor Chelonian Conservation Center, uh -huh. and I traded a Sulawesi forest turtle uh, for some of these Burmese stars. Again, the Burmese stars, I think, make a great breeding project. This is a full-grown male. You can see, the, it's a male, you can see the- Because uh, the indentation. Yeah. Right, on the plastron. The plastron is the bottom of the shell, and you can see that this is indented. This, of course, is to enhance breeding success, sure. and that the male is usually like a Volkswagen. I, I get that. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah, it makes sense. So with yeah. most species of tortoises, the male will have a concave plastron. The carapace, of course, is the back part of the shell. Oh. So well, I, I thought these were supposed to be slow. I mean, these guys are in a definite hurry. <laughs> well, you, you can see how they definitely have different personalities and uh, different motivations. <laughs> but I think if we're going to have a tortoise race, this yeah. would be my entry right here. Oh, we, yeah, we better. <laughs> so this well, is well, uh, halfway through. Maybe we ought to. I, I know. I love these guys. Okay, very good. Let's. Uh, I know we had some lizards. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay, babies. Oh, oh yes. Wow. This is <laughs> this is fascinating. Here we can talk about babies. Now these are slower these, moving. These oh. are just starting to hatch. I see one. Oh, look at this. One, one. Ow. Yeah, we have one. It isn't out yet. It's just starting to Turn come out. Turn that around so maybe we can get a close-up on that. On uh, this guy right there. Just who's, starting uh, to come out. Who's so, the close-up master there? Okay. So we have a number of, uh, as you can see, these are baby sulcatas. Sulcatas are a large species of tortoise indigenous to sub-Saharan Africa. This, I would caution the people that are thinking about getting this. You get a good close-up These on get that. large. Even though I'm trying to breed smaller ones, I'm trying to breed some that don't get more than 30 pounds or so. 30 pounds, uh-huh. Well, that's the goal. 
Yeah. But typically, the males will get to be well over 100 pounds. And so anyone that's considering getting this tortoise should be ready to have a bulletproof backyard and ready to have their backyard trampled. How do you keep them small? Selectively, okay. I'm selectively breeding I'm for uh -huh. the small ones. Uh -huh. And so... Um, it doesn't have anything to do with feeding them. You feed them plenty. You no. If you can see what, if you can get a shot in the, in the, uh, in the egg to see where one is just coming out of the shell. If yeah, the out. camera will get it done. Yeah. Um, it has nothing to do with feeding them too much to control. That's fascinating. Well, I do, Excuse me, feeding. I do try to feed them uh, moderately so they don't grow too fast. Yeah. You're right. I mean, pretty much any of these tortoises, if you feed them as much as they will eat, they will get very big very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you know, there are a lot of different um, tortoises. Sulcatas come from a very vast range in Africa, and some are just naturally smaller than others. Mm -hmm. You know, there's probably some subspecies that still need to be identified, and these recently have just been reclassified. That's different, just awesome. Different genus. So yeah. I think, I just think they're really cute. And you can see the, when they, when they first hatch, they have a little bit of egg yolk on the bottom of their shells. Yeah. But this is a long process. I've seen this on television where it just shows them crack, 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 and then they're running out to the sea and then the animals come and eat them. But this, uh, Steve was saying it takes like three days, From about three a... days or so to break out of a shell. That's correct. Well, That's amazing. When they first pip, pip the shell, they take their time. Yes. And the egg yolk, they have this egg yolk on the bottom of their shell that they need to absorb. So when they first break out of the shell, they're not ready to go trucking around. It takes them three or four days to absorb the rest of the egg yolk wow. before they're ready to go all around. That one. It's finally moving. It's moving. It's like, yes, I'm going to escape. Okay. And you can see, I don't want to mess with them too much. You right. just let them come out naturally. You, you don't can help see they, the they have the egg yolk on the bottom of their shell that they slowly oh, wow. absorb. So you don't try to get that off because they are, it's a nutrient. You're absorbing that. To... Well, gently, you gotta be very gentle with these things because you don't wanna do any damage. But yeah, uh, we'll gently miss these guys and then the ones that are ready to come out, we house them in separate containers with moist paper towels, usually a little bit cleaner than this. <laughs> and then, um, right, so then you don't want too many of them housed together yeah. in too small a area. Yeah, we got about I 10 minutes left. Yeah, I, wanna... I see another guy wants to okay. come on. He wants his spotlight got, right got... now. <laughs> we'll start going through wow, these. Wow, look at him. Up. And he probably be lunch, so. Whoa, look at that. Beautiful. All right, so this is a photogenic species. I oh. love these guys. This is Fluffy. Oh, hello, Fluffy. And I would. Hello. Yes. I would peel the skin off his uh, nose, but he might get irritated with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Fluffy is a uh, prehensile-tailed skink. This is uh, from the Solomon Islands, and he is a arboreal animal. Lives in the tropical rainforest. Very good climber. Beautiful. Sometimes they call him monkey-tailed skinks. You can see he's got a very well-developed tail. Oh. And uh, I have about 11 of these. They used to import wow. these in large numbers, but uh, the exportation has been restricted for about the last uh, so, so. 15 years. Is they, is, are they adoptable when, from your uh, skinks? No. no. These They're guys little... sell for about $1,000 each. Wow. And so <laughs> uh, there are a lot of people that would like to adopt yeah, them. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, and I am trying to breed these. Uh, and so hopefully at some point I will uh, have some available for adoption. But unfortunately, not right yeah, now. Yeah, so neat. I think we have a. The next animal coming up, we have a, a dwarf species of monitors. Monitors are a family of lizards with over uh, 40 oh. species. And this is a little bit unusual because these guys are full grown. We have Get here a oh, really? catch them. <laughs> we, we have a male and female. Beautiful. Look at the pattern on that back. Would How you like beautiful. to hold him? Sure. Hi, so, baby. So that's my male. This is called he'll, a he's, he'll bite you. Varanus. Now, he Don't can bite. Say. But yes. he typically won't. I wouldn't do that to Darlene. <laughs> However, you're right. They can. They are carnivorous lizards, and so they can bite. Now he he might me. side your good meal. Mm. <laughs> but I, I like to get these my guys. Carrot. They're 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 active, and uh, yes. they, they make for a better pet than um, mm. iguanas. Are not are considered an advanced animal, so mm. I would caution anyone before they go out and to Petco and buy that iguana to do some research yes. and maybe. 
it would be more appropriate to have a lizard that full grown at this size rather than six feet for a green right. guano. Yeah, so these now, are yeah, he's not, not like the, the huge he's, monitor. He's anxious to go. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he, he's just turning around quickly because he doesn't like the light or he, he wants Doug. <laughs> right. So um, next up, uh, I think we're going to do the indigo next, right? How did you get started in all this? What what made you want to just, I, I have to have lizards and reptiles and snakes? Well, as a kid, I was into dinosaurs. I loved dinosaurs. I thought maybe I wanted to be a paleontologist. Uh, well, at some point, I kind of realized that, uh, you know, field work might not be as glamorous as, as it seemed. Yeah. And um, I was more interested in the live animals. And so, uh, like, for example, this next animal we're going to see reminds me of a cobra. And so... Yeah. This is an indigo snake. This is, is this one that was on before, or is this I think a, it a is. brother or a sister? Or this is the male that this we have. Like. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful. snake. So this it's is also black. listed on the uh, U.S. endangered species list wow. as a threatened animal. Are, mm. They're not native to, are they to the U.S. or they are from Florida. This is a Florida? Florida in, in, oh, indigo. Oh, they're in Florida. There's also right. a different subspecies found in beautiful. Texas. Oh. And so. they're uh, a constrictor. You want to hold them? They are a constrictor. They're a colubrid. They're one of the largest colubrids, and they're the largest. Snake like the king say in North America. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, in the United States, they're the largest. Now, why does snake? he want to climb up me? Because I'm probably not. Because you know, it's been a long time since we've had a snake. Because it's a kind of long time ago we had yeah. a boa. Yes. Oh, he's strong. He is really strong. I can feel his muscles back he here. He is yes. very strong. He's yes, very about the strong. Size so I have a pair of these. I'm trying to. Uh, get the female a little bit larger before I breed them. Wow. One of the challenges with this is they do eat other snakes, one of their main, <laughs> and so Smaller you, you kind of want to make sure that they're both about the same size. Ah, yeah, sure. only, they're, they're, are they, do they have any cannibalistic it's tendency? They right? can. If they are hungry, if they're hungrier no. than the and they want to breed, if they want to eat more than they want to breed, breed, then yeah. sometimes you have some unfortunate results. Yeah. And so it is important that you kind of have them about the same size. And so how old were you when you really got into this When I was hobby? 16, I think I had, a, I did have a 12-foot uh, Burmese python and a 6-foot water monitor. You were 16. Water, yes. monitor? water monitor? Oh, water, water monitor. Large, large monitor. Oh, <laughs> I think of mock water moccasin and a snake. I said, oh, my God, you don't want one of those. In the bathtub, right? Of course. <laughs> So how long did you have these? And you, you had them for a long time, and then it grew. You went on from I, there. I did for quite a while. Oh. And then this, um, this is one of the pets, mm. pet snakes, pet pythons that we do recommend. Oh. This is a ball python. These guys are. Uh, Five minutes. We were doing good. Well, that's a fe that's a female, right? How do you know? Because of the tail. I think it is Because a of the tail? Yeah. Yeah, they, they have a fat end and then a uh, Right. A, a male or more. Uh, yeah. Now, the uh, female has a fat end. Yeah. <laughs> on, on the snakes. <laughs> like most field males. No, uh, Doug is correct. The, uh, the males typically have a longer tail. Longer I would tail. phrase it slightly differently. <laughs> the males typically have uh, larger spurs and longer tails. Now, this could go, uh, uh, will a ball Python grow very large? Or? This is pretty much full grown. They might get oh, a little bit bigger. Oh, but, so they're uh, not a large python. Oh, I didn't realize that. And so we would recommend the people investigate if they're thinking about getting this. When snake. I think of python, I always think of these huge things that grow that 20 feet. That's, a, that's a nice segue, right? Yeah. Yeah, could so be. we used to get uh, these Burmese pythons in for rescues or rehoming Burmese pythons. They get very large, and uh, frankly, they don't make as good of pets as uh, the ball pythons. So we would encourage people this is a better pet. to this investigate is. a ball python before they think about getting a uh, Burmese python. Mm, mm. Yeah. Well, and what's the difference between, we had a red red tail um, a bull constrictor. Bull yes. Tail. What's the difference between a python and a bull constrictor? They're both closely related. Uh, they're both considered primitive snakes. Uh, boa constrictors give live birth. There's uh, differences with. Uh, this I know they're, yeah, they're, their face looks. The scale. Their head is different. Pythons typically have heat sensing pits, whereas uh, some boas do not. <gasps> this uh, next snake wow. is a python. What a beauty! And he's a good oh, sized python. Oh, right, thank, thank you, Steve. <laughs> wow. How much does this guy weigh? This weighs about 30 pounds. That's all? Wow. Maybe 35. It's been a while since I had him on a scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was oh. a rescue. 
This is a very oh, nice snake. It was spent you. years in a classroom. Oh, beautiful. Look at you. Oh, you were in a classroom. And this is an albino oh. Burmese python. This oh. is a male. And that's kind of rare. That see the yeah the, the difference in the tail. Yeah, you can see it's oh, more. Pretty. I would say it's relatively uncommon. Uh, they're not as common as people used to keep classroom? these as pets, but it's uh, less common than they used to be. So we used to get a lot of these in for rescue, for rehoming. He likes me. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Nowadays, what's, a, what's the biggest rescue snake that you've uh, have, that you've brought in? There's your daddy right there. <laughs> we in the past we've placed uh, large Burmese pythons and large retics. I'm oh. guessing I don't know the exact number, but I would say 12, 14 feet. Yeah. Yeah, well, I have a question uh, uh, about that. You know, this thing, you get a snake and then it's nice as a little pet, and pretty soon it starts getting big and then it's going after your, your, your pet, <laughs> other pets. Uh, do, you, do, uh, do they do have the like kind of, louse, do they or? have a problem in <laughs> California like, like they do in Florida? No. They're releasing pythons out into the wild? Right, there's been a lot of press in Florida about pythons getting loose in the Everglades and migrating all the way up. There was a very controversial paper that was published by uh, the U.S. Ge Geological Survey. No, the, and the short answer is no, we don't have that problem here in California. We do have problems with red eared sliders being released, pet turtles being released into the ponds and waterways. But really, this, this, they wouldn't fare well in the California environment th then. This huh? snake, uh, all it would take is one hard freeze, and, he would go and it would be a goner. Oh. And so do you in this plan to expand your breeding program? Or you just stick where you are, or is there any plans that you have that? Well, I have two and a half acres, so I would like to expand at some point. You do want to expand. But I think I'm going to restrict it to carefully chosen species. So I'm not going to be breeding bur albino Burmese pythons anytime soon. Ah, well, you know, it's always such a pleasure to have you on the show. Can I invite you back again? But sooner than two and a half, <laughs> yeah, two and a half years. Yeah, so, we'd really <laughs> like to keep track of how you're doing mm -hmm. with your bre breeding. And this absolutely. was fascinating. So you'll come back heavy, when we invite you. Girl. Absolutely, I really enjoy right. it. Oh, well, you know, people can check the website to see more details about when the, the programs are coming. You said the, the fair is coming up July. Santa Clara yes. County Fair. Yes. We will be there from uh, July 31st through yeah. August 3rd. Check the website and uh, thank they you for watching They have meetings. The show. Yeah, a lot thank you local. for watching the show. Watch again. Yeah, because you have uh, uh, everything listed, right? Yes. You're beautiful. beautiful. Yeah.